All your injuries, all your wrecks, and all them heartaches start. Let's have a look at why we call this uh, area here the House of Pain. Uh, as this rider leaves the kick, when you ride that kick, the momentum's going to carry you up in front of that rope if you release the lift. Now, as you see, that, uh, that arrow pointing to that arm between the elbow and the hand is creating a barrier where that uh, momentum can't let you get to the front end, so it lifts you up to the back end. Now you got 1,800 pounds dropping on your arm and a big kick hitting you in the butt. That jams you over the front end, jerks him back, and yanked on him so hard that it uh, uh, pulled the meat off his arm. Right here, now the important thing that's going to take you to the front end, get you out of the house of pain, is the kick. If you stay back until that kick is gone, see this rider here stayed back. Now with the kick gone, he's got no inertia, no motion to ride to the front end. So when he starts to move to the front end, then he's, he's got stuck back there. It forces him to lift on his rope. When he starts lifting on his rope, then he's, he's back in the house of pain. That's the area between the rope and the flank. And that uh, area between the elbow and the hand won't let him get forward of that. And these higher level bulls, you see them better riders go up in that front end. Um, this rider here gets stuck in the back. The bull gets leverage at you. And this is where the injury is. And that's why we call it the house of pain. This bull's going to yank him down, hit him right in the chin, and he's going to take a nap. <laughs> Hence the house of pain. Right here late in the ride after Terry Don rode this bull, he relaxed, got caught back in the house of pain. The bull never quit bucking, run up in that front end, run him back, and then he gets leverage at him, just like the last rider up there where that arrow was where he should have been. Uh, boy, wham, he hit that ground hard. Now you see Tough rides at the front end up, to, up there, maybe a foot in front of his rope, sets his hips, and then as he goes back over that front end, right here, he's maybe a foot in front of that rope, uh, where he stops out there. That's riding it out there, getting the left arm out of the way uh, and allowing inertia to take you on out there where the control is. But uh, if you stop it by lifting on the way out there, you're going to get in a problem. Here Terry Don is again, uh, straightening the arm out, going out in the front end, uh, going to set his hips as this bull comes down and then move right back out there. The whole name of the game is ride the jump and kick, especially on these high-level bulls. Don't worry about the spin. Take care of the jump and kick. Uh, Michael Gaffney, another legend, out in front of the rope, uh, sets his hips. Uh, we watch that, uh, that riding arm straight out, straighten out there. Now see the lift coming down. The lift is on the way down, not on the way out. You lift on the way down, suck your butt down there, and then turn loose and, and let yourself go out to where that center balance is. The whole thing is to release the lift on the way forward, lift on the way down. But if you're lifting on the way up, you're going to cause yourself to get stuck in the house of pain and uh, we didn't call that the house of pain for nothing. In the first webcast, we seen uh, the riders moving out in front of that rope to get away from a bull's power. Here we got Bodacious, and uh, I don't think there's a bull in history had more power than Bodacious. And uh, C.L. Johnson getting on him here, as you can kind of see by the look on his face, there's, uh, there's a lot of terror there. He knows this bull, one mistake, and it can really lead to disaster. So uh, he's got to be real careful, and he's got to do things right. Now, one of the things that we teach in, uh, in my bull riding schools that we've taught all the young riders is what we call zone defense. Everything you do, you want to go straight forward, straight back without getting out of a zone, uh, the width of your body. You want to stay in that zone. Getting out of it's going to put you in the heart of the power zone. So as we watch CL here, let's uh, let's give it a watch and kind of see what he's doing here. Woo! <laughs> That's what we're talking about, the power zone right there. So let's take a look at it, and I'll show you some things that will put you in the heart of the power zone because one little uh, inch or two makes a lot of difference on a great bull like this, uh, uh, whether you're in the power zone or you're in what we call the sweet spot. Now, CL uh, executes the first jump pretty good. He's right in the middle of him when he hits. He executes that jump. He hits uh, the kick. He's got a lot of energy to come off of that kick. Now, where you want to take that energy is straight forward, right out in front of that rope. There's no power out there. The power is behind that rope. But the one place that you never want to go is either left or right, out of your zone. Uh, when I taught uh, Luke Snyder's zone defense when he was 16 years old, he called me up a couple months later and said, I've rode 50 bulls in a row. This zone defense works. But uh, where CL is going here is out of the zone. He's, he's leaning away from his hand. We call that the kiss of death. It uh, blows his uh, left foot back. And uh, by the time he gets back to the middle of the bull, he's going to be uh, two or three feet off his rope. 
And what happens is by the time you get back in the middle of them, you got 18, 1900 pounds tied to your arm in the front. You got a big kick coming up, hitting you right in the butt. And I don't care how you work at that formula doesn't work. Ooh, wow. <laughs> so uh, that's what a bull like Bodacious can do to you when you get out in the wrong spot. This webcast, we're going to critique one of the great